Welcome back to MATLAB for a simulation of the time dependence of the wave function for the particle in a box. So just as in the rest of these MATLAB videos, I've got a function here on the right which I've written up that is going to take the input of some vector c which is going to be a set of coefficients for the eigenfunctions of the particle in a box for that linear combination of them and then just some factor to where it is in a convenient time scale for us to watch. And basically for each of those uh, individual components, each of those individual eigenfunctions, it's going to calculate the spatial wave function, then tack on uh, the time part to uh, produce an imaginary and a real part of the wave function. So for that complex exponential, we can calculate what the real part of that is and what the imaginary part of it is. The real going to be some cosine function, the imaginary going to be some sine function. And we're also going to plot the probability density function, which is uh, the psi star psi, or absolute magnitude psi squared, which is the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. So let's get started with this. Um, first off, we're going to look at the case where um, the particle in a box is just in the first eigenstate. It's all in the first eigenfunction, so the wave function is an eigenfunction of the Hamiltonian. So I'm going to call this time dependence function, use this time scale here. And as we can see, what we've got are uh, the real part is, I believe, this blue line going back, uh, going up and down. And the imaginary part is the green line trailing behind that in phase. So those two over time, um, this is the lowest energy solution. So we know that 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 period of oscillation depends on what the energy is. So this being low energy takes a long time to go back and forth. And then as we see, I said these were stationary states when the wave function is an eigenfunction because this probability d density function in red here is constant through time. So this, the sum of the square of these two is constant throughout time. So the particle isn't moving back and forth. Its density is just constant at one position. So that's the first eigenstate. Then let's instead go to the state n equals 2, where we're entirely in the second eigenfunction. And this time what we're going to see is we have, again, the two peaks in the probability density. but um, the energy this time is four times greater, so you're going to notice that this wave function is going back and forth four times faster than the previous one was. So this, this frequency is four times greater than for the ground state because its energy is four times higher. And similarly, we can continue on to n equals three, <coughs> and we'll see the same trend going forward that we've now got three peaks. We've got two of these nodes here where the wave function is zero at all points in time. You should notice the analogy to the, uh, the classical wave equation for the vibrating string when we looked at those animations. Um, the wave functions for a particle in a box are very similar to that system. As the Schrodinger equation, we um, did a sort of derivation from the classical wave equation, so the two are very related. And indeed, that's why we showed that animation. So we can see that now uh, the energy, depending on n squared, this frequency is nine times faster than the original frequency. So that's an example of the stationary states where the probability density does not move in time. So now let's look at some cases where the probability density does move in time. So let's say my coefficients are each the square root of 1 over 2. And I'm choosing this because I want the total wave function to be normalized. So the sum of each of these squared, so square root of 1 over 2 squared plus square root of 1 over 2 squared equals 1. So the sum of these two is 1. So our total wave function is going to be normalized. So the probability of finding the particle somewhere is still going to be 1. So I'm going to up that one. Now you'll see that <coughs> our, our two uh, imaginary and real parts of the wave function, they sort of move back and forth. They aren't just a phase delay from each other. And as a result, our red probability density function moves back and forth to where the particle is mostly on the left, then mostly on the right, left, right. So the particle actually has some momentum. It's moving back and forth. 
and its ex and the expectation value per position is changing. It's moving to the left and to the right, so it has some momentum. So if you calculate the expectation value for momentum here, you're not going to get zero as you would for any individual eigenstate. And you'll notice that there is a nice period to this oscillation, and that's that cosine term in the time dependence that we looked at in the, in the previous cases, or that complex exponential, what it results in when you work out the math is basically there's a cosine term of where the expectation value and position is. It moves back and forth with some nice regular frequency. And that frequency depends on the difference in the energy levels that it's in. So if there's a greater difference in the energy levels, then this oscillation will be faster and faster. So if we look at that same thing with the particle half being in n equals 1 and half being in n equals 3, <coughs> this time we see those nodes oscillating. So on average, the particle is still 50% to the left of this uh, center here, 50% to the right. But if you calculate the expectation of x squared, of position squared, it would change over time. But the, uh, <coughs> the expectation for position isn't going to change here because it's symmetric and it's the same on the left as it is on the right. And then finally, let's look at the example we gave um, for calculating uh, expectation values within the superposition principle where we have uh, part in n equals 1, part in n equals 2, and then part in n equals 5. Let's see what this looks like. And you can see, as was the case for the classical wave equation, this quickly gives a lot of wavy nonsense. Um, it's basically, as I said, you can represent any function you want by a proper choice of coefficients just by finding out what these coefficients are for this basis set of eigenfunctions. But it, you have to pick the right coefficients to do that. So any arbitrary wave function you want can be created with a with the correct set of coefficients, but uh, this choice that we showed here for that example of calculating what the uh, expectation value is in a superposition of states like this, these wave functions can get quite crazy as now we can see that the particle is definitely moving around quite a lot. That red probability density function is moving back and forth quite wildly. So that's just an example of how time dependence works in the wave function and um, how you can how you can visualize the, these these consequences of stationary states and what uh, their expectation values might be for things like position or momentum. <clears throat>